Hey everyone, um, here we go again, another video. Looks like I'm doing a video a day. <laughs> That's not gonna last long, but um, just seems to be working out right now. Uh, this video though is a haul, uh, pure and simple, I hope. Uh, there, was, there are Memorial Day sales at several of the comic book stores near me. I went to the one just right down the street and bought a bunch of comics and then got in the mail this package that I've been expecting for a while from um, in stock, not in stock hall, from uh, Lone Star Comics, from mycomicshop.com. Um, so I'll start with that. This is how they packed it. Lone Star seems like a pretty good place to get back issues. Uh, they usually have a lot of choices of... Um, uh, condition. I think I mostly, I don't know, mostly went with cheaper condition here. Can't remember for sure. This is how they pack it up. There was a, um, this is the, uh, what do you call it? You know, the receipt. The invoice, that's the word I wanted. So sorry, I don't really... <laughs> I haven't done an unboxing in a long time. I had open, pre-opened the box. I just thought I'd show people what the box looked like. Um, hopefully this won't take too long. T tape stronger than the man, so we'll go with scissors. I dedicate every one of my hauls to Matt. I'm sure there will be absolutely nothing. Matt will know why I dedicate them all to him. I'm uh, sure there'll be absolutely nothing in this haul of any interest to Matt. Anyway, uh, let's see. I don't know why they have two separate packages. Maybe it's two different warehouses? Uh, again, I apologize. I thought this would be quick and seamless. Okay, here we go. So I talked on a, I think it was in my contest video for Gimpy about what runs I'm trying to fill out, and one of them was um, Atlas Comics, the comic book company that only existed for a year back in the early 70s. So um, I think these are all from Atlas that I got from in stock, not, I keep saying in stock trades, from Lone Star Comics because I couldn't find Atlas anywhere else, or so I thought. Um, so this is one, this is issue number three, let's see. Uh, these are all out of order. Um, well, we'll work with what we got. So there was one called Target. Uh, Atlas Comics was started by Martin Goodman, who is the owner of Marvel Comics. He sold Marvel Comics. He, with a contract to whomever bought it, that um, his son would get the job as publisher. And very quickly, they either fired or somehow let go of his son. So to get revenge, he created this comic book company, uh, I think with his son as, in charge, um, but aimed directly at stealing artists and stealing rack space and everything. Um, I think they were paying the artists more money. They might have been giving them more rights. I'm not sure about that. Um, and they just put out a whole bunch of comics at once, and then they belly flopped. But so there was this one target, which was about a guy who was like a secret agent or an assassin. And then, um, so I guess, I guess Lone Star does not send you these things bagged. This is issue three. I think I've got issue two in here, but by issue three, as they did with a number of their comics, they changed the hero. So I think they got a different artistic team and they put him in a costume and, um, and then, and then the comic book ended. Same thing happened, I believe, with the Phoenix. This is Phoenix 2 and 3. So the first <coughs> few issues of Phoenix, it was this weird sci-fi kind of thing. I, I have to reread it. I can't, we're talking about memories from when I was, whatever, 12 or 11 or something. Uh, and it had this kind of unique art. And then, if I remember correctly, this issue... Well, it's, 
No, this is the same team. Maybe issue four they changed the Phoenix, or maybe the Phoenix was not one that changed. Um, I think it's in the future. Anyway, <clears throat> back to struggling with the taped up package here. So I assume there'll be other issues of the Phoenix and of Target in this other portion of the package. Where did I put my scissors? There they are, under some comics. So what I had never noticed is that my comic book store actually does, because I've looked at other comic book stores that I was expecting to have Atlas Comics, uh, like the one in Vancouver, Washington, that's so good, and I couldn't find any there. Um, and this one that I go to every week, I never noticed that they had some Atlas Comics. But today, during the sale, I found them. So I got some more Atlas Comics at, at the sale, along with some other stuff like Batman stuff. I mean, probably cheaper there because of the sale than with... Okay, now these ones are bagged and board. There's target number two. Yep, so I guess issue one, he was a regular spy, and then already with issue two, they turned him into a superhero. Target, and added John Target, man stalker. Um, that's just the way they went there. Here's one that I remember was written and drawn by Larry Hama. I think my memory's right on that. Larry Hama was an artist early on in his career, and I guess he switched over to mostly doing writing. Uh, okay. This one, if I remember correctly, was by Michael Fleischer, and it had this <coughs> Ernie Colon art that in my memory is the best Ernie Colon art I've ever seen. People who remember the Bronze Age and the Silver Age will remember Ernie Colon, perhaps. Wolf number two, I don't know if that's still Hama. They just, they were in chaos there. And, and there's the Grim Ghost number three. So I think he was the ghost of like maybe a colonial guy. Um, and I can't remember why they, did they send him back from hell? Or, or did heaven hire him to get the demons that were coming to earth? One of those kinds of situations. Wolf number three. Some of these I had as a kid. I remember I had the Grim Ghost. I only had one issue of Wolf. I think I had two issues of Phoenix. There's issue one of Phoenix. Um, Barbarians featuring Iron Jaw. I already have all the Iron Jaw issues, the four Iron Jaw issues that exist, and there was one issue of this one that had a bunch of different Barbarians, you know, going for that Conan market. Another Grey Ghost. Uh, pretty awesome cover. I'm going to have to get all of these in Mylar. Um, Wolf the Barbarian number one. Is that Larry Hama art? Maybe with uh, Claus Jansen inking? Oh, yeah, Phoenix with issue four. So he made it four issues, and in four issues, they turned him into a more or different superhero. Phoenix the Protector. So those are my uh, Lone Star orders. I, I'm actually pretty excited to get and to own and soon to read all these um, Atlas comics. It's going to be a weird, a nostalgia trip to this tiny corner of my memories of being a, a comic book collector when I was a kid. And now I'm opening up my backpack where I stuffed a ton of comics. From, from my local store, Excalibur Comics, down the street. Um, so they'll be in whatever order they ended up in after being checked out. I got I already own this, but I got issue six of Devilers. I'm hoping when I go to the other store that has a sale, I'll get uh, four and five so I can send those to um, Brian. Then I got, I, th they had a section of just miscellaneous Batman one-shots. And the, most of them were Elseworlds. And so they were costing me three fifty or $3 with the half price. So that seemed good to me. So I got a bunch of, you know, what they used to call prestige edition, like mini graphic novels for $3 a piece. Batman meets Houdini. Oh, this is, I think this is somehow connected to Batman Year Two. Batman Full Circle. I never had this. Um... 
I don't know if this is an Elseworld or something else, but it's story and art by Darwin Cook, so of course I had to get it. Batman Ego. Um, Bob Layton and Dick Giordano doing Batman and the Ra Batman Dark Knight of the Round Table. I had to get that. I love King Arthur stuff. Um, this is different, not a, not a prestige format, but it's a one-shot. Batman meets Doc Savage. Doc Savage, of course, has is one of the most famous pulp fiction uh, heroes who's clearly a progenitor to lots of different superheroes, and Batman might be one of them as kind of a rich guy with lots of gadgets and a, being a great mental detective kind of thing. I also think of Doc Savage as somehow being a big influence on the Fantastic Four, but... Okay, I almost didn't get this, but the art on the cover looks so good because it's by Kevin O'Neill. Um, Batman Might Fall, Legends of the Dark Might special. So, um, if only for the art, that seemed worth getting. Batman Mr. Freeze by Paul Dini. They just don't do things like this anymore, I think, because graphic novels, you know, collections sell so well. This is maybe... Uh, when they were experimenting with different ways to sell longer stories. Max Collins and Edward Barreto, Scar of the Bat. I assume that's Batman as a 1920s mobster, maybe? 1930s? Um, Batman, Ten Nights of the Beast. It's by Jim Starlin. I'm not sure if that is Venom back there or someone else. Okay, so that is apparently all the Batman. More weird Atlas comics. This guy was named Destructor. I think he also changed identities. I think some of his issues are done by S Steve Ditko. I don't know if he's a Steve Ditko creation. Or maybe this one's by Larry Lieber. Uh, this cover's by Larry Lieber and Wally Wood, which is uh, something you don't see every day. Um, a few more Atlas. This one was called The Scorpion. It was by Howard Chaikin, created by him, I assume. Um, that was issue two. Here's issue one. Uh, and then there was a... No, I, don't, I didn't get that issue. But then there was a third issue where they took it away from Howard Chaikin and made The Scorpion a whole different uh, superhero. And then they had this imitation of the Hulk which is a caveman version of the Hulk brought well, awaken into our time called The Brute. I'm pretty sure that was written by Michael Fleischer. Um, Michael Fleischer, most people at this point would know as the creator of Jonah Hex. His stories were always kind of grim and amoral. I don't know who did these ones, but I, I kind of had a hankering to collect uh, Bronze Age sword and sorcery whenever I can, particularly these sort of oddball series that only lasted a little while from DC. So they're all in reverse order by the clerk at the store. So I got Beowulf Dragon Slayer number one. And number two, I can't immediately tell who the artist on there is. I wonder if it was Ernie Colon. Um, and I don't know who did the interiors or who wrote this, so when I crack this open, Maybe I should just crack one open now. Just always worried about this. tape accidents. Let me get the tape off. I'm ultimately wanting to put any of my bronze or silver age stuff into mylar. It's all on this paper that's you know slowly deteriorating. But this was written by Michael Uslan, art by Ricardo Vill Villamonte. Michael Uslin, I believe, Uslin, I believe he's a movie producer now. Is that, could that be possibly correct, or do I have him confused with someone else? Okay, then, so all of this stuff is so nostalgia-driven. I got uh, Fantastic Four 147, which is the first issue of the Fantastic Four I ever read as a kid. I believe this is the issue where... Um, Sue Storm delivers divorce papers to Reed Richards and says she's going to uh, become the bride of Submariner. And then they all fight. 
and it has a uh, great pseudo Jack Kirby art by Rich Buckler. And I picked up this Commandy, which I may or may not have. I used it's my favorite Commandy cover, so I thought I can't remember if I still have this or not. I should have a list of all the Commandies I still need, but I thought I'd buy it uh, at half price. It was a pretty good price. <clears throat> And then, even at half price, I don't think this was a great price, but I thought, well, it's right there. I don't have the Warren Spirit issue number one. At least I don't think I do. If I do have it, then this will be a gift to somebody. I was trying to guess which ones I still need. I think I don't have issue number two, so I grabbed that. And then, um, this is one of the kitchen sink ones, which continues the numbering of the Warren ones, and I picked that up just because it was there and I was pretty sure I didn't have this issue. I really need to have one of those little black books, but it would take me so long to put together the black book. I'm still working on putting all my back issues into the CLZ app. Um, but that app's a little awkward, I think, when you're in the middle of searching through bins to find out what you do and don't have. But um, maybe I can, once I get everything in that app, I can master, master that. Um, so... I'm excited by all of this. I, I, um, I hope it was of some interest to some of you. It's shopping time. Talk to you all later.